Happy Monday, Coach. Another road game this week. Your team back out on the road, but uh, thoughts to put a close to the end of UMass week and now turn your attention to Jacksonville State. Well, we uh, we won a close game, um, and that's always a good thing, you know, especially uh, uh, early in the season and, and still trying to get better and, and um, you know, figuring them out. We played them last year. I think they're much improved. Um, and uh, we're winning, had a chance maybe to really extend that lead, but didn't. Um, they came back, took the lead late, um, and then our guys responded by uh, coming down and, and finishing the game. And so um, I think that's uh, kind of one of the major positive takeaways is, is that we finished off a, a close game uh, at the very end. Um, definitely have things to get better get better at and improve that that's always the case and um, I think that uh, you know we have our teams and staffs so undivided attention with that um, but uh, thankful for the people who came and um, thought it was a, a good crowd and um, a good football game. Uh, Mr. Rubick would you like to lead us off on, online first? Yeah coach uh, besides obviously getting the win what did you like that you can build on in a positive manner from that game? Yeah, uh, there's there's plenty of things. Um, you know, as you know, I always talk about turnovers and takeaways um, as the, the number one statistic other than the final score. Um, our defense took the ball away four times. Uh, you're going to get to hear from uh, Bennett Walker had two interceptions, has three on the year. Um, and so just obviously massive, massive plays. Uh, three of those came in the first half. Um, so that's a huge positive. Um, you know, right now, just after three games, you know, we're um, edging up towards where we want to be, even nationally and our turnover takeaway ratio. And then our special teams, um, we, we weren't perfect, uh, but we were uh, – pretty close to being excellent. Um, our punt team uh, really came through, um, almost pinned them inside the 10 three times, and I, not just with the punt team, one of those was a kickoff. Um, and uh, Mitch and, and company really had a great day. Uh, Jesus was two for two on the field goals. I thought we covered kicks really well. Um, so those you know, special teams turnovers, things that I talk about all the time, I thought were uh, were huge positives as well. Talk about Samson Evans' lack of play in the second half. Was this a coach or a personnel choice? Thought that Gina was just kind of the hot hand. Did you hear that, Greg? Uh, Samson in the second half was it more a personnel decision or just riding the hot hand? Um, yeah, or a little was bit. Was he injured? I didn't see her beat up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's it's maybe a little bit of all of that um, would be probably the best answer. A um, little bit of all of that. Uh, Dave Gricky, would you like to, to get in? Yeah, can you talk about uh, Hamzy Elzea from uh, Bordson? Is he like your playmaker? Because, I mean, he has a huge long kickoff return in the season opener and then the game winning touchdown uh, uh talk about what he brings to the table yeah he, he's really um, come up big and i know he did the the press conference following the howard game and, um you know that that uh, final offensive play um you know it's a scramble situation and, and austin uh broke right and uh, Holmes did an awesome job uh, just with his scramble rules. You know, if you're deep and you're open, stay open, stay deep, and make sure that you're mirroring the quarterback. And, you know, when you watch it, he just did it uh, so well. It was a great ball, great catch, and then to make the guy miss to score, um, obviously a, a huge, huge, huge play allowed us to, to win the game. Um, so he really has uh, come up big, and uh, we're, we're proud of him. Thanks. And what are you uh, looking for in this game? Because obviously Rich Rod uh, is a heck of a coach and can, uh, can bring a lot of different things. Right? Oh, yeah. No, this is uh, going to be a, 
another huge test for us going on the road down there and unfamiliar, um, you know, with, with this program. Um, they're two and one right now. Like you said, uh, Rich Rodriguez is their head coach, and um, they're still going super fast. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what he's uh, done for a long time and does it at a really high level. And then defensively, you know, they base out of a, an odd front and like the three high safety look, which, um, you know, has, has kind of risen up here in the last few years, um, but uh, creates a lot, of, a lot of confusion and a lot of great players running around that play super hard. So it, it'll be a, um, a massive challenge for us. Thanks a lot, Coach. Yep. Coach, I wanted to ask you about the uh, Heisman candidate, Bennett Walker. <laughs> I mean, he's number one in the nation in interceptions, at least tied for it. But can you talk about him as a player? He's Defensive Player of the Week in the MAC. But it's one thing to be good in coverage, but also when you get a chance to get your hands on the ball to make that catch. You know, <clears throat> when uh, when you, corners are often the best athletes on the team. Um, but sometimes those best athletes don't always have the hand-eye ball skills. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's hard to figure out, too. You can watch tons of film, tons of games, tons of years, um, and, you know, getting PBUs, you don't necessarily have an opportunity to, uh, to catch the ball. And if they're not a returner, you don't always know. Um, and so, you know, when Bennett got here um, this summer, that was one of the things that uh, stood out, um, you know, was that he had uh, great ball skills. And uh, so he's really put that to use here early in the season. When the ball's on the ground, Justin Jefferson has really developed a knack for sniffing out the ball and, and jumping out. He's got two fumble recoveries. Can you talk a little bit about him? Yeah, I mean, guys who, you know, are constantly running after the ball and finishing plays um, are – are going to be those guys, and that's absolutely Justin. I mean, he's got a, a motor that does not stop. He's relentless, um, and so you know it's not surprising at all that uh, he's the one getting up with the ball. Um, you know, after we've uh, forced a fumble, uh, just really, really excited and proud um, of our defense about how how they've been taking the ball away. JB Mitchell, it's a bit of a homecoming for him. Yeah. He's an Alabama guy. Can you talk about uh, what he's meant to the offense, offense so far and how he's kind of fit into that offensive scheme? Yeah, so, you know, JB's been here for a couple of years now and is, you know, behind a, a really good group. And, um, you know, those guys are, are gone now. So this is his year to, to really step up and, and be a part of it. I think he's been really comfortable out there. And, um, you know, we're, we're confident and, and comfortable with him. Um, and so, you know, we haven't got our passing game going full throttle yet. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we plan on that happening here soon, and, and it'll be a major part of it. Can you give us any end of the insight of the conversation, Jerry, with Coach Pike as far as getting that offense rolling the way you want it to? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's been three games, and we just haven't gotten into the, the rhythm that we know that we can get into yet. Uh, so we're talking about that a lot. Um, we do like how we're running the football, but want to be equally proficient in both the uh, the run and the pass. And um, you know, feels though that we've had some some opportunities. You know, in every play, you can figure out what's happened and um, why and why not. Um, and uh, so we're uh, yeah, we're going to continue to work on it. We really believe that we're going to have a, um, a very proficient pass game, and it really hasn't happened yet. Coach, this is a tough road trip. You got to go across country. Um, you got to play at a venue where the fans are going to be on top of you. That they're strongly supported down there, and they've had a bye week. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of challenges, but you you talked about the cool temperature of this team and and how you expect them to respond down at Jacksonville. Yeah, I mean, we met briefly yesterday. Today's our guys' day off, and so we really you know get a feel when they come in you know tomorrow for meetings. Um, and by then we have our plan and, uh, you know, we'll be raring and ready to go. But, uh, yeah, I mean, emotionally, we, we've really, we're not like this with this team. I mean, it's really, really steady. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, you know, again, there's, um, groups on our team that knows that we've, you know, left some things out there and, you know, can play better and that we've had, you know, areas that have really 
shown and got to get better as well. But, uh, you know, I've done done well. And so I, I do. I think uh, just talking to some of the, the leadership and whatnot last night, um, I think that, uh, like, when we get together on, on Tuesday for that first practice, like I said, our being undivided attention and uh, a very serious approach uh, to getting better this week. Thank you, Coach. Rob had uh, one quick follow-up. Bruce? Yeah, Coach, are you pleased with the progressive Phil Fire of Austin Smith as quarterback in game one to game two and actually from last year to this year so far? Is it developing the way you're the host? You say the development of a development Austin Smith. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, um, Austin and Taylor, they weren't really a one-two punch last year. They sort of traded off, you know, being injured. And then it was the, the very end of the year, you know, Austin was started the Kent State game and it was the second play of the game. He got injured. Uh, and then Taylor, you know, finished off the season and played at a really high level, um, particularly those, those last three games. And so... You know, for us, I mean, Austin has starts underneath his belt. I mean, you know, played uh, the majority of the game at, at uh, Arizona State and won that. Um, and so, you know, this offseason, it really wasn't as much of a quarterback uh, battle in figuring it out. It was, hey, let's accentuate, you know, Austin's strengths and, and let him develop and all of those things. And, um so yeah, I mean, it's been probably a, a slower start than than what we uh, all had anticipated. Um, again, in the Howard game, I really just think that it, that wasn't an Austin Smith thing. That was two kickoff returns um, and then a big lead and then a bit of a, uh, just a subtle relaxation, if you will. Um, didn't have very many plays. And, you know, Minnesota, I think we left some things out there and didn't have as many plays. I mean, we're about 50 plays a game and our opponents are averaging about 75 and that's just not, you know, not enough for us to get in, into a rhythm. Um, he's totally capable. He's made some huge plays, um, you know, on scramble situations that arguably, you know, won the Howard game um, to get us down there for that, uh, you know, the field goal to make it a, a two score game. and. Um, had some huge plays this week and then won the game with his arm. I mean, he's, he's uh, very, very capable, um, you know, and he's got it in him. And uh, it's uh, uh, not something that we're, uh, like, worried about. You know, we, we want to develop and get better as an offense and whatnot. And the quarterback, obviously, you know, holds the keys to that. Uh, but we know that, uh, you know, he's got what it takes. Uh, Coach, uh, and, and penalties, that's one thing that your team's also kind of lagging in. You know, 25 in total, that's the most in the MAC, uh, 8.3 per game. Just what's kind of been the source of like all that? Like what, what's been going on with, with all the penalties so far? Yeah. We had six in Howard. I mean, I told the guys, I mean, championship football is an average of five a game for 50 or less yards. Um, I think the first game we were at six, and then it went up to – Eight, I believe, um, at Minnesota, which is getting too many. Uh, and then this week was, I think it was listed at 10, but with offsetting, it was even worse. Uh, I think we're in the neighborhood of 12. Um, and that is not the recipe of, you know what I mean, of a, of a great football team. So um, we talked about that uh, with the team uh, yesterday. It's, it's not something, though, that you know, I have to bring up in a way that's it's going to all of a sudden straighten everything out. I mean, nobody in this room, uh, when, you know, when we're meeting, uh, feels good about the fact that, you know, we're that high in, in penalties. Um, and, uh, you know, the reality of it is, you know, sometimes you're, you're just playing football and penalties are going to happen. That's why we don't say zero. Um, and then the, the other reality is there are absolutely – uh, penalties that we have total control over um, that should not ever happen. And our, our team's crystal clear um, on the difference between those two. We want to be aggressive, I promise you that. Um, you know, we don't want to be a half yard off the line of scrimmage 
uh, if we can be, you know, an inch behind the line and we're trying to get somewhere. Uh, but uh, but we got to do it right. And uh, again, I think that's something that uh, will be cleaned up here this week. Uh, we had talked about kind of like how your team finished the game, you know, against UMass, of course. Uh, you've strong, your team has shown strong finishes in the Howard game in the past couple of years, like the way you've closed out games have been strong finishes. Can you talk about the way that you're able to just finish games, not just play into good scoring games with good scoring margins, but actually finishing strong? How important is that for your team? Uh, it's critical. You know, it's critical. And I mean, it's a combination of execution and belief, right? You, you got to have both of those things because you're, you're not going to execute if you don't believe you're not going to you're not going to come back or you're not going to make that play in a critical moment if you don't believe and and then even if you believe if you're not doing what you're supposed to do you know and you don't execute then it's certainly not going to happen so i think it's a combination of those two things um and uh you know there's a strong will and a strong drive you know with this team and uh, again just totally collectively you know we don't feel as though we've met the standard that we want to set. And so we're really driven to, to get to that. Um, you know, at the same time, um, just because things have been perfect, you know, I mean, we've, uh, you know, been able to, to win games and, and uh, some, some close games and coming back at the end or finishing it off at the end. And um, so we're, we're excited about that. And that that'll be thank you. Yep. Great. So, you know, your offense says, you know, showed a little bit throughout this season, um, but we've seen an improvement this week against UMass, um, 214 yards, I believe, on the ground, 157 through the air. Um, was that kind of like a chemistry thing, then building on their chemistry? Was it a different game plan? What did you see um, from them this week, and how do you build on that heading against Jacksonville State? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't um, – we've got a new group of receivers, you know, and – Austin has not been the full-time starter, but I really the the chemistry. I mean, it's a it's a really good question, but I don't I don't feel as though there's a lack of chemistry, even though there's some some new faces. Um, I really think you know when we watch the film, it's just a, a lot of small little nuanced detail things that just haven't completely come together. That might be timing. It might be spacing. Um, it might be an awareness, you know, there's just, so, um, yeah, we've just, uh, we've not connected in the passing game. Like I know that we're capable um, of doing, but uh, um, we really, really believe that that's going to happen. And then your defense has been um, really resilient, uh, not a lot of touchdown scores, especially in the red zone. Um, what, what have you seen from them and what speaks to you the most um, about their physicality, especially in the red zone? You know, I'll go back to, you know, when you're in the red zone or, you know, you even think about the Minnesota game when you're, you know, inside the 10 and five yard line, um, you know, you've got to make a decision that you're not going to let them in. You got to believe that you can stop them. And then you got to execute. It's, it's really a combination of those two things. And, um, you know, just looking in the in, into the eyes of our guys, and I'm really thinking of Minnesota because that's when I mean it was six times that they were down there. Um, and again, even with less than a minute left in the game, um, I mean, our guys wanted to play. They wanted to keep them out. Um, you know, it wasn't like, hey, this game is over. It doesn't matter. And I'm, you know what I mean, hanging my head. There's just there wasn't any of that. Um, and you know, anybody who's a competitor knows, you know, that's just awesome. You know, it's how it's got to be. So, uh, but they're, they're playing really well as a unit. I think they've had some really good plans and um, yeah, I mean, there, there is a good sort of mojo and chemistry and the confidence that's um, continuing to develop, which is going to serve as well. And then talk to me a little bit about Joe's ratio and his um, success that he's had this year so far. He's the leading tackler on the team. Um, what speaks to you the most about him? What have you seen either, whether it's on the field or off the field that um, speaks to that success? That's the thing about Joe, he's the whole package. You know, he's a captain voted on by, you know, his teammates and the staff. Um, he does things the right way. He cares, cares about other people. Um, he's, a, uh, he's a quiet 
you know, like sort of an unassuming person off the field, doesn't bring attention to himself, soft spoken. Uh, but man, when the whistle blows and he's on the field, I mean, he is, you know what I mean? Full speed. Um, and I don't want to say reckless abandon because, I mean, he knows what the heck he's doing, you know? Um, and uh, he he's one of those guys that just loves football and plays like it. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, 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 we love him. Um, he's off to a great start. Coach, Micah Coleman, you've had some great edge rushers here at Eastern Michigan. Here's another guy that seems to be following that mold. He's had a couple big sacks here early in the season. Can you talk a little bit about him and what he brings to the defense? Yeah, so Micah, you know, we've we've known that he's just a, a been a great talent. Um, and he's someone that's really developed in um, knowing what to do and how to do it, but, you know, has, has the ability um, – and so we just think he's going to continue to get better and better. Um, and that's, you know, that's a good group, and that's a group that we've been banged up at. Um, and so we put a lot on his shoulders, and, um, and he's off to a great start. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Okay. 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 Coach. All right. Great. Bennett. Go get him. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks. All right, well, then we'll start off with a fun question first. Congratulations, Defensive Player of the Week in the MAC. How does that feel to uh, earn that weekly award for your play? Well, yeah, it feels great, but firstly, I just want to say I'm a person who I believe in God, so I'm just thankful that God blessed me. I mean, um, gave me an opportunity to make plays, you know, he's with me all the time, so yeah, I'm, I'm really thankful for sure. Ben, could you talk, uh, let's talk about the second interception first, the one you made in the court of the end zone. Uh, just talk about how that play developed and how you were able to make that catch as you were falling backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically the guy that I was guarding, it seemed like he ran like some type of wheel route and I knew it was coming out. So when I got my hands on him, I was just looking at the quarterback and the ball just came. You know, I shed it off of him, just came, caught it, secured it. That's pretty much it. Have you have you been surprised that uh, you have three interceptions here in the season? Um, I wouldn't say surprised because when I go out there, I always plan on making plays. You know, I'm gonna show people my talent. I feel like I'm capable, but I will say that, you know, I'm just I'm just happy and excited that the plays have come my way. You know, I'm just out there trying to do my job. So. Captain Shine told me he thinks this is the best secondary he's seen since he walked on campus. But as you look across that defensive secondary, how do you feel about the guys you're playing with? Oh yeah, I feel like we have dogs everywhere in our secondary. So I came from a JUCO, so just being here and seeing the differences, I feel like everyone back there is capable of making the plays that come to them. So yeah, we got some dogs. Yeah, I knew you came from a JUCO. How does it feel to make that transition and play at the D1 level and know that you can perform at this level? Um. Did you know you, you could play oh, yeah, this yeah, yeah, level? Yeah. You had some I, doubts when you walked out campus. No, so I've been knowing since high school. So basically, I played during 2021, the COVID season. That was my senior year. And I got started playing football pretty late. But when I had started playing, I knew, you know, like I could compete at a really high level. I felt like I could have been successful if I had went D1 earlier. So it's always been in the back of my mind to be successful when I got here. So when did you start playing football? My junior year. Of high school. Of high school. Mm -hmm. you, hadn't, you hadn't played any football well, I played when I was a really little kid, like second, third okay. grade, but then. So what made you decide like, yeah, you know what, I'm going to play football, and then here you are, Division One. So I had a head coach in high school who had played in the NFL. His name was JT O'Sullivan, and he came to my basketball games, and he seen I was really athletic. So he was just like, oh, yeah, you should come out, you should come out. And I waited till like halfway through my junior year, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to just try, you know. And it just ended up going really good. So I was like, I'm gonna stick with it. And unfortunately, my senior year got cut short because of COVID, but I feel like I would have had a great season that year. And the, and the funny part is too, in my last game in my senior year, I had two picks. So so you, you were playing defense back and receiver? Or they just had you defense I, back? I played both, but I ended up having like an ankle problem. So it was mostly DB. That's why I started leaning towards DB, but I played both in high school. And just because JT O'Sullivan said, you know what, I think you'd be a good football player, yeah. you decided yeah, midway that's... through the season, your junior year, to give it a shot, yeah. and then here you are. Mm -hmm. 
pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable, man. That's, great. That's awesome. Mr. Rubik, do you have any questions? Can you hear me? We can hear yeah. you. Go ahead. All right. You've got you to unmute yourself. See, that always helps. Bennett, did that with Jake? Jake. No. You're muted again there, Mr. Rubik. Wait. I keep unmuting and stop muting me, Greg. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. He can mute himself. All right. Until he gets back, Alex, you got a question? Uh, so, okay. I, so the JTO Sullivan thing, just because you just said that, do you have to, like, keep watching his videos as, like, your, like, film study for yourself, or? <laughs> nah, but he does have a, Q, he has a YouTube channel called The QB School. Right, I'll watch right. a video here and there. So I check in. Uh, the JUCO experience, obviously, it's, it's not easy to go through for anybody. Uh, you got into football pretty somewhat late in your life. Uh, a lot of guys come into the JUCO system from, you know, Arizona, like Jose Ramirez used to here. What was your experience like there, and how did it prepare you for the D1 level? Well, I had a good experience in JUCO just because, you know, I was staying with my family, so it was nice being around my mom, my brothers, and my dad every single day. I lived in San Diego, and I loved it there, so that was pretty nice. And I also had a good group of coaches at Mesa. So I feel like they prepared me pretty well for the Division One level. And you, you'd probably stand out at a lot of places where like you could have gone to school at. Mm -hmm. Here at Eastern, it's a pretty skilled group of defensive backs to you know to play along the side. Yeah. How does it feel to be able to break through on this skilled roster and not only do that, but really start producing at a high level? Yeah, it feels great just knowing how many other great players that we have inside the room to stand out a little bit. Um, but yeah, like I said, I feel like we have a bunch of guys who can make plays, so just look out for us. Uh, I know the team goal is to win that MAC title, mm -hmm. but what personal goals do you have for yourself? You know, not only right away, but kind of moving forward as you grow up as a college football player. I just want to make sure that I stay close to God, number one, and just go out there and make sure that I tune out the outside noise and just believe in myself, go out there and show my talent every day. As long as, you know, I can live with myself at the end of the day, like with the successes and the failures, as long as I know as I, that I went out and I did my best, you know, and just believed in myself, did everything I could do to make the play, then I could live with anything that happens, you know. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you just a little bit more about, you know, that journey. You just mentioned how, you know, you started playing football your junior year of high school, and then, you know, you go to Juco, and now you're here at Eastern Michigan playing Division One football. Um, that that journey's not easy, you know. It's it's sometimes a rocky road. So how, is, how has that prepared you for this moment, um, and where's, like, keeping that belief within yourself? Oh, yeah, for sure. There's been a lot of ups and downs on my journey. I could tell you that, but... Yeah, just like I said before, I've just learned, you know, you got to roll with the punches. So I'm just tuning out the outside noise, just staying faithful in myself through the downs and the ups. That's all you can really do. You know, if you keep hopeful and you keep persistent at what you're trying to do, I feel like you're going to break through eventually, you know, only the strong survive. So that's like how I just go about everything that I do. And then this, this secondary here is very experienced, very talented. Um, does it make it easier, you know, for you playing alongside guys who um, are very talented, very experienced as well? Yeah, for sure, because I can just look around the room that we're in and just ask questions, and everyone has, like, a good answer for me. Like, guys like K-Pog, Scotty, Kempton, Sean, like, when I'm in the room with them and we're watching film, I can always just whisper some to them, ask some questions, and, you know, they'll have it like that. Because those guys have been playing football for I don't know how long now, so it's nice getting like knowledge from my peers like that. And so. then the JT O'Sullivan thing, um, him kind of being that guy who got you into football, mm -hmm. um, what has he been like for you along this journey? Um, and that is, is that a guy who you still talk to, you know, on, on a weekly, daily basis, whatever it is? Well, I wouldn't say like weekly, but he'll check in with me for sure. You know, I, I'll, I sent him a letter the other day. He texted me today, actually. He said, like, keep it up, you know, you're balling. And, just things of that nature. So, you know, I'll talk to him every once in a while, for sure.